If your immune system were an army, your macrophages would be the tanks, the T cells would be the generals, and the thymus would be the pentagon. T cells are created in the thymus from stem cells and released to guide the immune system in its work. This can be to organize an attack on an intruder or can be to regulate an autoimmune response. But once deployed, the T cell is forever stuck responding to that particular stimulus. Only the so-called naive T cells, which have not been fully engaged, can ever respond to a new threat. This is a problem because as we age, the thymus tends to atrophy and become dysfunctional. And when there are no more of these T cells left unspecialized, it is extremely bad for your health. What do we do? We die. While the actual cause of death might be labeled as cancer or even a common sniffle, when your thymus is withered and your remaining T cells are used up, you will have a very short lifespan. Thankfully, there are some solutions. Phototherapy or photobiomodulation is one way it is believed the thymus can be restored. Now, the mechanisms are quite a few different mechanisms. The main mechanism revolves around the mitochondria. So the uh, cytochrome C oxidase, which is unit four in the mitochondrial respiratory chain, is accepted as a chromophore for red and near infrared light. And the idea is that you get more oxygen consumption, more ATP, the mitochondrial membrane potential goes up. Um, other things happen, but one important thing is that the mitochondrial metabolism switches from glycolysis back towards oxidative phosphorylation, which is important because it has a few um, effects on, on the whole metabolism. Um, you get a lot of signaling happens based on this mitochondrial activity. You get uh, nitric oxide released, you get ATP and cyclic AMP, We've got a brief burst of reactive oxygen species. These activate transcription factors. So June FOS is AP1. Um, I kappa B allows NF kappa B to go to the nucleus. And these transcription factors can trigger the expression of over a hundred different genes, which is a long lasting effect. So these proteins that are triggered by this, these transcription factors will last for hours, days and even weeks. So a single exposure to light can have long lasting effects. As I said, this switch of glycolysis to oxidative phosphorylation is important for two reasons. One is that stem cells are activated. Stem cells in their hypoxic niche carry out glycolysis. But when the mitochondria are activated, they need oxygen, so they have to get out of their niche when they can undergo proliferation and differentiation programs. The second effect of this glycolysis to oxphos switch is anti-inflammatory. So macrophages have an M1 phenotype and a pro-inflammatory carry out glycolysis. When oxphos is activated, they switch to the M2 anti-inflammatory phenotype. And if these happen to be microglia in the brain, they can undergo phagocytosis, for instance, disposing of amyloid plaque that clogs up the brain tail. But we did discover quite a few interesting things about how shining light on the head has beneficial effects. And we've summarized them in this diagram here. So there's a lot of different processes here, and there is positive evidence for all of them, actually. My guess is that the main driver of the benefits of phototherapy is nitric oxide release. This allows more oxygen to all parts of the body and allows cells to use healthier forms of energy production instead of the Warburg effect. It allows the cells to burn fat using oxygen, and when it does burn carbs, to use oxidative phosphorylation to mitigate some of the damage of burning the carbs. There are many other effects, however. 
It also stimulates the release of stem cells, which can not only rebuild the thymus itself, but this is also necessary to the process of creating new T cells. It seems to be the case that mitochondrial complex 1 can be skipped over by this process, which is where many of the harmful byproducts of energy production come from. This could also have a big effect on mitochondrial health. When more oxygen gets to the pituitary gland, this could also help regenerate the pituitary and in turn release more growth hormone. Phototherapy has a strong effect on the liver, which is the first place it was used medically, and the liver is needed to activate growth hormone for use in the body. In people with metabolic syndrome, this step fails and causes even worse problems in the body, including organ catabolism over time. This includes the thymus. In the Trimex trial, growth hormone has been shown to reverse thymic involution, or the atrophy of the thymus, and even gray hair in some participants. What got us started uh, is uh, this observation here that uh, we all have this master gland of the immune system, the thymus gland, uh, but unfortunately for us, by the time we're 30 or 40 years uh, of age, almost all of the functional mass of the thymus is gone. And that's un unfortunate because we need that thymic functional mass to make T cells that defend us against uh, infectious disease and cancer. And I roughly estimate that after the age of uh, 50, at least a third of us die as a consequence of that involution of the thymus. Next scroll, thank you. So uh, there was evidence that we could actually regrow the thymus, and so we decided to do a clinical trial back in 2015 to 2017. And we found that, yes, indeed, we could, based on MRI imaging of uh, functional thymic mass, we could regrow functional thymic mass in people up to the age of 65. And in fact, uh, we could see reappearance of new uh, thymus manufactured cells in the bloodstream and a disappearance of certain senescent uh, T cells, which are making way for the new ones that are coming out. We also saw a sign of reduced inflammation, which we were hoping to see, reduced uh, prostate cancer risk indices, and even changes in hair color in a few of our people. Scroll, please. And with respect to hair color changes and things like that, that sort of suggested a general anti-aging effect. So Steve Horvath ran four different epigenetic aging clocks on our uh, volunteers and showed that in every case, aging seemed to be going in reverse, at least based on the output of those clocks. Later on, Steve went back and had another look at the data based on a completely different metric, which is the plasma measurement that we were just hearing about, the plasma pheno age clock of uh, Morgan Levine, and found the same thing. Next scroll, please. So for that reason, we decided to go on to see if we could replicate those results. So we're calling uh, the new trial the TRIM-X, extension of the original TRIM trial. Uh, we're dividing it up into different tranches. The first one is A, which we've uh, completed as of this month. Uh, we don't have all the data in yet, but it's beginning to show some uh, signs of replicating what we saw before. Uh, the age population is about uh, eight years uh, older, uh, but epigenetically they're the same age as the original trim population, so they're a different kind of kettle of fish. We saw a little bit of hair darkening, but not as much as what we saw in the uh, trim trial. But we have seen improvements in prostate cancer risk, uh, a decrease in uh, CRP, uh, and the immune results and the epigenetic aging results will probably be in by the end of this month, but unfortunately don't have them yet. But we do have uh, data in on the plasma pheno age clock. And uh, in the original TRIM trial, about 51% of the people responded positively in that regard, although all of them responded positively in terms of the epigenetic aging aspect. We see the same proportion of responding positively in TRIM X A, so that's encouraging. Next slide, please. So I just had to throw this in. So Steve Horvath uh, volunteered to be a partial treatment control in our uh, group. And uh, he was taking uh, DHA metformin, but not growth hormone. I was taking DHA metformin and growth hormone. His statistical results were not there. My, mine were, don't know if that means anything, but it's interesting. It kind of suggests that we can re reproduce some of the results from the TRIM trial. Next slide. So some new things that we're seeing uh, in TRIM XA, increase in lymphocytes both absolute and uh, percentage that correlates with reversal of plasma pheno age, but we did not see that in controls, only in the treated group. Next slide, please. Uh, we also saw some new things. So we've confirmed that in people that enter the trial with a high uh, carbon dioxide level in their blood, it goes down. That's suggestive of improved lung function. We have made a limited number of uh, measurements on people who have gone through exercise training at our campus 
and we've seen uh, in, uh, 25 percent uh, uh, improvement in VO2 max on average uh, with a high statistical significance again suggesting improved lung function next uh, and going along with that we're finding improvements in muscle strength uh, both in men and women as you can see down here and in exercise tolerance is indicated by the lactate uh, uh, threshold improving this gentleman up in the right uh, corner uh, entered the trial at the age of almost 81 and a little, a little while later he started uh, enrolling in 5k races and started sending us his times and I think if we started doing linear regression through those times, we'd see that it keeps going down and he, kept, he says, well, I beat my record, I didn't even try. So we may have some more objective data that come out of these, some of these subjective reports. Next slide, please. Uh, another thing that we saw in addition to the uh, improved exercise capacity, muscle strength, et cetera, is a 14% decrease in the total body fat percentage. The thymus is particularly sensitive to growth hormone, which tends to sharply decline with age. While a man's testosterone tends to stay relatively steady into old age, if he is healthy and active, by age 30 growth hormone for both men and women decreases to a fraction of the amount present at age 18. Joining the Trimex trial is quite expensive as growth hormone is ridiculously expensive, but thankfully you can get these benefits at home and even do it for free. Fasting is free and can dramatically raise your growth hormone well beyond the levels you had when you were 18 years old. This is how the frail can regain much of their health from fasting, even though most would assume it would be the opposite case. While muscle is not strongly affected by this, it has a huge effect on your internal organs, especially the thymus. It even helps in some other unexpected places. For these poor devils, it's too late. But there is hope. Here at the Atlanta Genital Institute, teams of doctors are at work around the clock to cure this dreaded affliction. Fasting also regenerates your liver, which is very important for the process of activating growth hormone once it has been excreted. You can also take glycine while fasting, and this will increase the release of growth hormone even further without breaking your fast. Regenerating lean tissue also increases your metabolism, which will give you even more benefits. While anti-aging can seem like a rich man's game, in reality the best things you can do for your health are either cheap or even free. With fasting and phototherapy, you can be back to your normal old self in no time. It's wild, Steve. It's wild! <laughs>